Hey guys, this is your boy Rusin, and as I had promised, I put together a new player's guide to Rapelzi. So, basically this guide is for brand new players or returning players, and it includes all the basics that a guy's gonna need to be able to play the game and have some fun. I decided to divide those guides in many parts, what it means right now, that's a basic guide for new players. Next guide, probably gonna be a little bit about the pets, or enchantments and things like that. Later on, I'm gonna be making guides for new players after you reach past master class, etc. etc. If you guys need a rundown of where to go and the quests you're gonna be needing to level in the game, you can check out our video, The Hitchhiker's Guide to Rapelzi, that I'm gonna be leaving right down below. So I hope you guys enjoy, and this is BND. Hey guys, so first things first, you gotta have to choose your race. Now, your race will determine which class is gonna be available for you. Now, you have three class types. You have the warrior type, you have your mage type, and you have your breeder. Now, some of those classes will branch to different other classes. Like for example, on Deva, if you're a warrior, you can branch into a more tank defensive type as well. At Gaia, you're gonna be able to branch your warrior type into an archer. And at Azura, you're gonna be able to branch into a hunter that uses crossbows. Now, as a word of advice, if you're just starting up the game or just come back, the best classes for you to play in the beginning are gonna be your warrior types. And I am not saying that this has to become your main character. The reason for that is because warrior type classes are usually the cheapest type classes for you to play. So when you start the game, you really won't be able to afford anything in any of the other classes. Also, for example, mage classes. In the beginning, when you don't have special cards to actually boost your magical abilities or equipment, they become very hard to play and to cause damage. Same thing with the breeders. The breeders are pet classes. If you don't have a high enough pet, your damage output is going to be very low. And because your armor type cannot take so much damage as well, you will have a hard time soloing all the way to master class. Now, the reason why I say soloing all the way to master class because that's what most people do. It's not that hard for you to actually solo all the way up there, but it is very hard to find a party to play with you. So you don't have to follow my advice, but that will become a much slower grind for you if you don't. So right off the bat, when you start, you're going to notice that Webs and Now gives you a lot of goodies when you start the game. The first thing you want to do is open your inventory, and that's by pressing the I key and set up your quick bar. So a couple of things, and that's my preference, I always keep it on, and it's my, my impact amplifier, altered pieces, lucky potions, and the most because those lucky potions are temporary my loot pad, my pots, and my stamina savers. Now, the reason for that is pots and stamina savers, they'll boost your EXP by 100% each. So if you have both running, you get four times the experience you usually would be getting. Impact amplifiers will double your damage, and alterate pieces will give you between 50 and 100 points on each attribute. And all this is gonna add up to your final damage, so you want to have this on, always make sure on top that they're running at all times and most when you're trying to power level. The way for you to just set up your quick bar, you just need to grab, grab and drag the items to the quick bar. All right, guys, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to click on that hidden village ticket and it's going to take to the hidden village. After that, and that's just my opinion, that's just how I like to do in the most if I were a new player, find the teleporter and teleport to Horizon. 
Now, I'm not saying that's a place you have to go. The reason why I say to go to Horizon is if I'm a new player, I want to get used a little bit to attacking and all those things. So Horizon is a pretty simple spot and it's close to the first dungeon you want to go to. Therefore, teleport to there, go north after the bridge and start testing your abilities. All right, so now after you get a little bit used to the controls, head west all the way past the next bridge where you're going to find the relics of the Moonlight Dungeon. And that's the first dungeon you want to be in. You have to be above level 10 to be able to enter what you should already be. If not, just kill a couple of things outside the dungeon. I know they're going to seem to be a way higher level than you, but with your pieces and equipment you get from WebZen, you should be more than strong to kill all of them. After that, what you're going to be aiming for is to be able to accumulate at least 14,000 rupees. I usually advise about 20 or plus because if you want to teleport directly to the dungeon, that's going to cost. It's not much, but it's always good to have a little bit extra. After you get that, hit your Hidden Village ticket and head back to Hidden Village. When you get there, go slightly east where you found the buffer Rapidly. He'll have two buffs for you. Each one costs 7,000 rupees. The first one going to be the HV buffs and the next one going to be player buffs. Those buffs, each one lasts two and a half hours. So depending on your class, it should pretty much be enough for you to almost get master class. Again, being a new player, it will take longer, but still you won't need to be going back to him all the time. Just make sure to look at your bar on the top of the screen so you don't run out of den when you're fighting a boss or something like that. After you get your buffs, you can head north and talk to the job supporter. You can find job supporters in every town, so you don't have to only go to the hidden village for that. Make sure you leveled your job level. You can check that by pressing the letter K. So you make sure your job levels and that's going to be the left screen is all the way up and cleared. Go ahead and pick your next job. All right, guys, exploit bonus fact. So let me say you guys didn't listen to what I said at the beginning of the video, that if you're a new player, you should be starting with a warrior type and you decide, hey, Russian, I want to do what I want. I want to try a pet class or I want to try a mage class. Hey, you can do that. Now, the exploit goes like this and it's pretty simple. Instead of doing what I told you, when you reach job level 10, the first one, you start leveling your character and choosing your class. You just hold to choose your class until master class. Now, yes, a few things going to be a little bit slower, but it will allow you to hold on and wear warrior type armor all the way to master class. Now, when you reach master class, you have to make sure that you level your job levels and choose your classes all the way up. But you do not have to do that until master class. So that's the exploit. So if you guys decide you're not going to go for a warrior type and you see you're going to have a hard time leveling with a different character, hey, just don't choose a class until then. All right, now equipment. So on equipment, I'm going to show you the basics about your equipment and how to awaken some of the items, make your weapons stronger. I will be getting more into that in a different guide, but I will right now get to the point that you can cause a lot of damage and not be so squishy. So the first thing you want to do is click on the pet card tab in your inventory, click on the disassemble button and double click on the cards you have right now. Now, word of advice, if you see any gold cards, do not disassemble them until you figure out if they are good or not for you. Some cards are better than others and some of those cards can be special cards. Now, all the other cards at this point, right in the beginning, don't worry about. Later on, when I get into pets in the next guide, I'm going to explain which cards for each class you should be keeping. So you can make belt pets to be able to enhance your damage, stamina, etc. So now click this assemble and you notice that in your inventory, you actually created awakening stones. You need awakening stones to be able to awaken special powers in your equipment. The way you're going to do that is now you're going to click 
on the enchantment button on top of your screen on the inventory, you're gonna pick a weapon. Now, if you're a warrior, you're probably gonna pick any type of warrior type weapon. A mage, you would pick probably a staff. Now, I'll say at this level, it really doesn't matter if you're a mage or if you're a warrior, you should be choosing a knife, a sword, or something like that. Next, you're gonna click on the Awakening Stone and choose Enchant. Now, as you guys see, uh, this is gonna give you a lot of extra status for your weapon. And in the most in lower levels, what probably you want to be looking at is P attack damage. So I was able to actually awaken weapons that I keep in my inventory for other new characters that have almost 500 total of P attack extra on the weapon for an awakenings. So as an advice, look always for a number about 300 plus. If you get a 280, it's not bad at this level. And since you're going to be getting a lot of loot weapons, just go awakening as many as you can. Choose the one with the highest damage, equip it. Now at those dungeons, you will find uh, different types of bosses. Usually it's two per dungeon. You will see a little bit of difference in numbers on the higher dungeons. If you're new, you will have a little bit of difficulty killing them. Um, I don't mean so much as he will cause damage to you. It's just going to be a little bit slower. But honestly, still, it's going to be 30 seconds to a minute. So it's not such a big deal. But the reason why you want to kill as many bosses as you can is because there is a chance they're going to drop boss cards. Now, the good thing about boss cards, as you see, boss cards give you stats. And the way you gain those stats is by equipping the card in your belt. Again, we're going to get a little bit more. When I get to belt pads, I will cover also boss cards in your belt and how to enhance your belt and things like that. But right now, let's just focus on equipping this card into your belt. And the other thing you can do with boss cards is you can also sell in the auction house. And the most for new players, it's pretty good to at least get a little bit of agile money. Uh, some of them sell for not that much, but still, they can give you enhancements later on in the game when you accumulate a good number of them. So I would say best to just hold on to them if you can. Now after you reach a little above level 50, you want to get out of this dungeon, go back to the hidden village. A little bit more on that you can find on the Hitchhiker's Guide to Rapelzi. And one of the things you want to do as much as you can is empty your inventory of garbage. You can sell your garbage to any of the vendors. It usually doesn't fetch that much money. But when you're starting, anything really can help. But now after level 50, you get into the rank 3 type of armor. So what you want to do right now is awaken as many weapons as you can. Pick the best one of R3 weapons. And you should start enchanting your first armor and weapons right now. Basically, enchanting armor and weapons that can increase your defense and attack power. What it means quicker kills and less damage coming your way. Now, the way you're going to do that, I will, for example, take a piece of armor that I plan to be wearing. After I click on the enchantment tab, I'll pick a cube defense. Now, you have to pick the right cube defense to the rank of your weapon or armor. In this case, rank 3 cube defense. Click in there. Now, what you have to know is from rank two all the way to rank six, there's no chance of breaking until enchantment level 12. After that, if you try to enchant and you fail, your weapon will break. Rank seven, weapons and armor, they will not break until level seven enchantment. Past that, you have a chance to break your weapon. So Remember that and be careful. Now that I got my armor to plus 12 enchantment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fortune cube. Now, how do you do that? You need to find the fortune shards in your inventory. If you just hover over them, they will actually tell you how many extreme powers you will need. Now, to create extreme powers, what you need to do is dismantle equipment. Combine all essence power and concentrated power you create 
and that will give you extreme powers. Now, it will give you 10 to 1 on each one of the steps. Just guys let you know, I usually try not to sell my weapons. I just dismantle as many as you can. It does cost some rupees for you to dismantle, so you need to watch your money as well. Now, the good thing about the fortune cubes is it will give you an enchantment in between 1 and 5 points. What it means, from a 12 armor, you could actually make a 17. Now, you can also make a 13 if you're not that lucky. All right, bonus facts. So, during your hunting zone dungeons, one thing you're gonna notice is some of the weapons are in blue. Now, those weapons, at some point in the game, they used to actually be really good weapons. Uh, Royal Axe used to add to luck. Other weapons used to cause different types of damage. But right now, with enchantments, they're not that worth to use. But the main thing for them is they actually get a high value to sell to the store. So since right now you just start the game and you're poor, don't dismantle any of those weapons and sell them all to the merchant. After you do that, there are two items at the merchant that you actually want to buy. One of them is kind of expensive for the beginning, but selling those blue weapons should get you enough money. And that's the tent. And the other one is the Chaos Stone. Now, Chaos Stone will actually absorb lag from creatures you destroy. This lag is used to energize your weapons. And the tent, just by being in your inventory, if you click below in your screen where it says titles, you see that now you can pick the title of Camper. Now, Title of Camper is great because that will give you a minus 10% damage. So it will help you keep you alive for longer. And that's a bonus fact. Alright guys, so I hope you liked this video. I hope it actually helped you guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, don't forget to do so. Don't forget to give me a like, leave me a comment. If you guys have any ideas, anything you think I should have added to the video, let me know. And I'll make sure to put on the next videos. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the game.